Okay, as promised, admittedly about a month ago, but as promised, um, this is my two hook Pompey Luke demonstration video. Um, it's a fantastic rig, it's a brilliant rig. I like it for long range casting with sort of slightly bigger baits. Um, the, the genius of it, and this I've got to give credit to one of the greatest anglers that ever lived, um, Ian Golds, for this rig. An absolute genius of a man. Um, but he came up with this long, long, long time ago when I was a wee nipper, um, and it's been a steadfast rig for, for a lot of people for, ever since, really. Um, right, the beauty of it is, is, is you tuck both baits in behind the lead. Um, so as that lead is punching through the air and creating that sort of pocket behind the lead, so for aerodynamics, um, all your bait and everything is tucked in behind the lead. So it's a very sort of, if you can imagine, short part of the rig body, a little bit like the Bagnall bar, this is where the idea came from, um, is all tucked in behind the lead and the rest is just very small components and creating very little drag. Um, it's a fantastic rig. I use it a lot when I'm fishing um, for sort of rays and things like that, but also want another, another sort of bait option out there. Um, so I quite often fish my usual 2.0 panels down the bottom with a whole sand hill, sand hill squid, anchovy rag, whatever you, whether you're fishing. You might be fishing down chesels, so on that you might have a sort of black lug and crab combo, something like that. And on the top hook, obviously you can fish whatever you like, but on the top hook, I often have a smaller hook, um, size one here. It could be like a rag tip with a bit of mackerel, um, for sort of dogs, whiting, straps, that sort of thing. Um, it's a great match rig in that sense, because it means you can fish a big fish bait and still scratch around with a slightly smaller one as well. Let's run through the components I'm going to use for this then. So, first things first, at the top of the rig, we're going to need a good strong swivel. So I'm just going to take a cast. Um, so I use the full stainless steel swivels. I'm using our size threes. Um, I'll have a big list of things on the video. So size three stainless steel power swivel for the top. For the snood swivels, I'm using the size six. Um, we'll also be using a stainless steel cascade swivel, a cascade swivel. Um, and I'm starting to use these new Tronics Pro SS2 cascades. They're absolutely brilliant. They're strong as an arc. Really like the fact that we've now got a stainless steel option on the cascades available to us all. Um, we'll need a spring. So I'm using the Gemini springs. I do prefer those. Um, bead wise, again on the Gemini, I'm using the 3mm clear rig bead. You can use whatever colour you like actually. Um, down the bottom of the rig, I'm using the imp. Again, you can use whichever clip you like, but for this demonstration we're using an imp. Um, and then I've got some Brennan 14 pound power gun for the stop knots. And hook wise, for this rig, or this demonstration, I'm going to use a Camtan B950U up tider with a T25 circle. So I'm actually going to put a panel at the bottom. I'm going to show you a little bit of versatility with the rig. And then the top snood is going to carry a size 1 B950U. Um, I've also got some luminous bait stops. And other than that, line. Oh, line does help, doesn't it, in a rig? Um, so rig body, I've gone with an 070. And my snood, I've gone with the 050. Um, make sure your rig body is strong enough for your cast. So this is one thing that's going to differ for everybody. Um, some of us use stiff rods, some of us use soft rods, some of us are big, strong, powerful people, some of us aren't. So make sure it's a good, strong line. I know with 070 I can whack a six ounce on that and give it full beans and it's never going to break. If you think you need to go a little bit more, just go a little bit more. Or indeed, if you think you can get less, do less. Um, I'm picking the Maxima Chameleon for two reasons. Um, firstly, it's my favourite line. I love using it. It ties a beautiful, beautiful knot. Um, and secondly, it's going to stand out a little bit better in the video than a clear line. Um, but again, you can use whichever line you like. So we're going to make the rig body first. So first things first, grab your big swivel. In this instance, the size 3 stainless steel swivel. I'm using a simple half blood knot there. Tie that onto your 070 line, your rig body line. Like so. Get your tape measure out. Measure out to three foot. And trim. That's the 070 done for this demonstration. So all we have now is a three foot of line with a swivel at the end. 
lengthwise. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to tie what I generally use, a sort of a, a general size-wise, but by all means experiment. You can go short, you can go longer, have a play with it. So the nice thing about making your own rigs is you can do things like that. Um, but for this demonstration, I'm going to do a three foot. Right, now let's thread some components on. We're going to thread on in the order of bead, swivel, bead, and then our spring, and then bead, swivel, bead again. So there we go. So we have bead, swivel, bead, spring, bead, swivel, bead. Simple as that. Then tie our imp on the end. I have just clipped my imp onto a small lead because I forgot my knot puller. It's always clever when you're doing a big demonstration. <laughs> So it's just something to hold on to. Trim. There we go. All right, that's all the components threaded onto the big body. Now we're going to do some stop knots. The first stop knot I'm going to tie is going to be right down the bottom of the big body, okay? So the end of the big body with your imp, where the lead is going to attach, slide down bead, swivel, and bead. And then we're going to add a stop knot just here to hold those in place. So to tie a stop knot, I should have put some red power gun actually, would have been easy to see. Hold a little bit of your power gun parallel to your big body. Form a simple loop, like so. And then I'm gonna pass that tag through the loop and round both of those bits of lines four times. So one, two, three, four times, like so. And just gently put it down. Uh, rig, uh, power gun does like a bit of a bit of lubrication, so give your stop knot a good slobber. And when you're pulling it down, just slow and gentle, like with all knots, try not to jerk, okay? Just slow and pull it down, nice and tight, like so. And what you'll notice is that the actual knot itself will go from quite a big sort of bulky looking knot and it'll suddenly sort of condense down into quite a small little knot. Um, and once it's done that, trim it off. Trim your stop knots as tight as you can. You don't want too long a tag showing on these. And then we have our stop knot and we can move that. Slide it down to about a centimetre, a finger width, I guess, above the knot of the imp. So that gives a, enough free movement to that swivel, but it's not going to slide up the body. Let's take a closer look at that stop knot, shall we? So here's my rig body. Here's my power gun. Lay the two lines parallel to each other like that and form a loop in the power gun, like so. Now wrap the tag of the power gun through that loop and around both bits of line. Two, three and four, like so. And then just slowly, nice and steadily, pull it down until it tightens down and grips. And then, with your clippers, trim it as close as you dare. Like so. Now we're gonna repeat the stop knot at the other end of the rig body. So at the top of our rig body we should have bead, swivel bead, and a spring. So we're going to put a stop knot below that spring. So exactly the same. Form a loop. Once, twice, three and four. Metal slobber. Nice, gently slow. Pull down. Down, down, trim. Trim. Um, oh, left that tag a little bit long. I'm a bit fussy, so we'll trim that down. Um, now I'm actually going to put two stop knots here. I'll explain why later. One, two, three, and four. 
Bit of a slow up. Slow and gentle pull down until it grips. And trim. Do use some kind of nail clipper, knot clipper, whatever you want to call them, rather than swivels for doing this. Right, that's our power gun done as well, so that can go away. And that is actually our rig body done. That was quite quick and simple. So just to recap, big strong swivel at the top, bead swivel bead spring, two stop knots, let's push them together because they're going to be together at the end, two stop knots, down the bottom of the rig body, stop knot and then bead swivel bead and in. That's nice and simple. Right, so for our snoots, um, we've got the 2O T25 circle and the 2O B950U, size 1 B950U, cascade and some bait stops and my 050 line. Let's do the top snood first. So get one of your stops. You can, you can use whatever stop you like. Um, I like these rubber grip stops. They're really, really simple. Um, tuck your line just into the loop of wire, slide it from the wire onto the line. There you go. Easy as that. You can use like a sequin and a stop knot. You can use the sort of doubled over a little bit of silicone. There's all sorts of ways of doing it, but that's my favorite. And tie on our size one hook there. Again, I do like to trim my knots as tight as I can. Be confident with them. So we've got a three foot body. I'm gonna make these just a little shorter. So I'm gonna to go to two and a half. Trim that off. Right. And the bottom one, bottom suit is slightly more, slightly more complicated, but not too much. Um, and this is the trick part to the to the pompy loop. This is the brilliance of it. Grab your stay, uh, your cascade tool. Forgot what it was called then. On the the normal round eye, so cascades have a, a round eye, a clip part, and then the sort of larger eye. Onto the round eye, the small part. Tie on a little bit of your 050. Like so, and let's don't normally measure, but for the video, let's measure. Let's measure off six inches of line, okay? And trim. Because I'm using a panel, thread on my circle, and then tie on my 2O cameras down there. Three, four. Now, when you're pulling this, not, just be careful you don't stick that circle hook in your finger. Yes, I have done it. There we go. So now we have a little tiny short snood hanging off the bottom of that cascade. On the other eye, the larger eye of the cascade swivel, tie on your 050 again. And same length as the previous snood. In its entirety, from hook to the end, let's go two and a half foot. And that is both the snoods done. Simple as that. Now we've just got to attach them to the big body. So the top snood, which is the one without the cascade on it, is going to be tied to the swivel at the top of our rig body. That's the swivel just above the spring. Probably figure this bit out. Tie our other snood to the bottom tool. Like so. And that is our rig tied up. That's all the knots done. The only thing we need to do now is adjust the stop knots 
to actually make it click down. If you're doing this in a shed or a garage or something, the best thing you can do is whack a little nail or something in um, so you can actually hang your rig up. It's much easier if you can hang your rig up that and then freeze up both hands. But I shall make do without for this. Okay, right, so the imp down the bottom, clip on your size 2 the bottom hook basically. Um, holding the snood, run your fingers up to where the cascade is, and then clip your size 1, the top snood, into that cascade like so. And then keeping that all tight, lift up your rig like this. Now what we want to try and achieve is to tighten that snood up, okay? See it's a little bit loose and saggy and that'll just fall off quite easily on the cast. So that's why we tie stop knots, because stop knots are adjustable. So what I need to do, because this is loose, I need to just move my slops, slop knots, stop knots up, probably about an inch or so. So one at a time, grab hold of that, slide it up, slide it up, and have a look at that again. It's all come unclipped because I haven't got anything to hang it on, so we'll just do that process again. Clip it on, clip it on, lift it up. Right, so this time I slid it too far um, and the snood is tighter than the rig body. Okay, although we do have a spring which is going to take up a little bit of that, um, that tightness, I'm going to just slide that stop knot down just to tiny little bit. There you go. That was probably about half a centimetre or so. And what we're trying to achieve, once I click this up again, there we go. So now what we have is the, the rig body and the snood, both nice and tight. There's a little tiny bit of tension on that rig spring, which is just going to keep it all clipped down in flight and whilst you're, whilst you're actually casting. Um, and then obviously when that stretches, when that leg, as you're casting, due to the laws of physics, you know, turns from a, let's say you're using a five ounce, five ounce lead into a, a 50 pound weight, um, that will stretch and that spring, let's see if I can do this, takes up a lot of the compression, which is the brilliant thing about this. So rather than stretching and damaging your snood, that spring is taking up the pressure of the cast. And also it helps release, as soon as it hits the water, the imp releases and it fires all up. And there you go. And that is a two hook Pompey loop. I nearly forgot something. I forgot to mention why I use two stop knots underneath the spring. Um, it comes back to the cast again. So as we're casting and that lead weight becomes a great big huge heavy force, there's a lot of pressure put on this swivel and the spring up here. Now one knot there can sometimes move, it can sometimes slip down the rig body a little bit. Although that's you know, nothing disastrous is going to happen on that particular cast, the next cast you go to um, it won't clip up. So rather than having to readjust a stop knot every time you cast, if you just put two next to each other, it just locks them in place. And that's that. That is the Pompey Loop. Brilliant rig. Give it a go. Um, any questions, obviously, please feel free to ask. Pop them in the comments or, you know, I'm in the shop. Give us a call, drop us an email, pop in. I'm always happy to, to answer any of the questions. If you happen to be in the shop, obviously, I can show you the rig itself. Um, sometimes it's nice to sort of see it in person, um, but it's not as difficult and complicated as a lot of people may think. Hopefully this video has sort of laid it out step by step um, and made it easy to, to tie. I'll put a link in the description um, of all the products that I use. Um, so if you wanted to copy it like for like, they'll all be there. Um, failing that, you obviously you can use whatever components you like, but like I said, it's a great rig. Give it a go.